We have an anonymous donation of $50 that says, My favorite part of GDQs is the late night and early morning blocks. The primetime stream is fun too, but there's something relaxing about the runs this time of day. Thanks to the people who stay up late to make sure the stream runs 24 hours a day. We have a $1,000 donation from BK. <laughs> Says, hi, Hootie. Shout outs to Vine Sauce. Money goes to your choice, except animal killing, because I'm a vegetarian. Hashtag buff stuff. My choice would definitely be the Contra 3 run. That still needs to happen with your help. So please, if you'd love to see an amazing run by Mr. K of Contra 3 The Alien Wars, please get your donations in. As it currently stands, we still have just a little under $14,000 to go. I would love to have that fulfilled by the time the Star Wars block is over. Daltanian donates $5 and says, Donating for Blecky's masterful commentary, as well as Indy and Garrett's scary good running ability. Woke up early for DuckTales, would never miss it. Thanks so much. We have a donation from Peter R., who donates $56.78. It says, Thanks for doing this. My mom survived multiple melanoma due to early detection. You're so very welcome. Rasu donates $10 and says, Garrett is finished with $100 more, so he's the clear winner. Money goes to announcer's choice. Mark Bob donates $20 and says, Great event, great people. Thanks for everything you do. Love to Olivia, my two-year-old niece who's fighting cancer. Much love. I'm probably going to butcher this, but Jobert J40 donates $100 and says, been watching for a few years now, but when I saw the goal of this year, I had to donate. My dad died from a very rare type of cancer last year, and I hope nobody has to go through that. Keep up the good work. You're tuned in to Awesome Games Done Quick 2017, benefiting the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Up next, we have Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, which thanks to your donation dollars, has now been pushed up to a 100% run by Glassnonk. It's sure to be a great one, so please stay tuned. Disco Jason donates $40 and says, DuckTales is one of my first NES games with Star Tropics that my father gave me. He died from lung cancer a few years ago, but I will always remember what sparked my love for gaming and soundtracks. To a great event, both useful and entertaining. Speaking of awesome soundtracks, here's $40 for the super hard genocide boss of Undertale. Anonymous donates $5 and says, Awesome event. Hope it will last many years and will survive cancer. From all of us here at GDQ, we just want to thank you so very much for all of your support. Because everything that you do goes to help out the Prevent Cancer Foundation. 
one of the nation's leading voluntary health organizations, and the only U.S. nonprofit focused solely on cancer prevention and early detection. For more information, please visit www.preventcancer.org. Cat Champ donates $5 and says, It's good that they were fast, but I wanted to hear the moon music. Love the runs. That was seriously impressive. Semper Rabbit donates $20 and says, DuckTales was the first side-scroller race where I could watch cross-eyed and see both players within two sprites width apart the entire race. Great job. And kill the animals. Another $20 anonymous donation that says that DuckTales race was insanely close. Thank you to both of the runners for putting on a good show and the announcer for really driving the tension. Donation goes to Undertale Genocide Boss Fight. Sterna donates $10 and says, I was going to wait for donating until the task segment, but I had to donate for that awesome DuckTales race. DuckTales is one of my favorite games. Save the ducks. Save the animals. And Wright0007 donates $50 and says, Shadows of the Empire is my favorite Star Wars game ever, and I have great memories playing it when I was young. I can still play it today. I'd like to say hi to my best buddy, Eddie, and my lovely girlfriend, Stacy. Great job you guys are doing. Reach that million. And just as a quick update, you guys are doing an amazing job with the incredible donation war between save the animals and kill the animals. As it stands right now, we're currently looking to kill the animals, but only by $135.93. That's about as tense as the last race was. I expect that to get even closer as the uh, time goes on. And it looks like we're just about set up. Here we go with Star Wars Shadows of the Empire by Glassnock. Thank you. <laughs> Woohoo. So this is Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, as, the, as was mentioned. We are going to be doing the 100% category. And um, any category of this game is run on easy difficulty because Jedi is way too hard, uh, especially on PC. Um, so I'm Glassnock, and my, on my couch I have the Psycho Ripper, Gravy Squirrel, Striker. And they will be helping out with commentary. So let's get started. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Right. So the uh, first level of the game is Hoth. Uh, this is one of the vehicle sections of the game. There are about like four levels that take place in vehicles, and the rest take place on the ground. Uh, the main thing here is he's going to be taking out all the enemies on Hoth as quickly as he can, and this is just going to require him to shoot the enemies as fast as humanly possible, which he is absolutely insane at doing. And the important thing about this level is that there's very little RNG on this level, so this all comes down to execution and how uh, quickly and efficiently you can do this. So he reset on Hoth a lot when yeah. going for record runs. It's really annoying. So this is the 100% category, so he's going to be collecting uh, what's referred to as challenge points. Each level has uh, different uh, challenge points to complete, and for this level it requires you to uh, use the tow cables to take down the AT-ATs, and there are three of them he will be taking down like that. On uh, any percent it's actually faster to just shoot them, uh, especially on the easy difficulty, they take a lot of damage. But uh, since this is 100% and they need to get challenge points, that's mm -hmm. what he's going to be doing. That mashing. Yeah. I switched between right and left hand mashing for this part, but all the other times I'll probably be using right hand. 
Hopefully I can hit one of these probe droids while I'm circling this guy. No. It's not necessary, but it will look really cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> swag, basically. Yes, I believe the correct term is swag struts. <laughs> I've tried uh, circling while tow cabling through the middle of this adat's legs, but you just lose the tow cable if you do that. So it would look cool, but doesn't Not work. really practical. Doesn't work. And that's the uh, Echo Base level. No, wait, that's hot. Yeah. Echo Base <laughs> is next. Echo is next. So yeah, he did his, hard, his best and took out all those enemies, but the shield generator still blows up, so. No enemies left. They destroyed the shield generator. Alrighty. So now we're going on to Echo Base, which is the first level where you actually play on the ground with our main character, Dash Rendar, here. And the first thing you'll notice is that I'm never going to be running straight ahead unless I have to shoot something in front of me. Yeah, if you're running, uh, it's a typical thing in, in games like this, but if you run forward and sideways and straight sideways at the same time, you keep momentum from both of those directions, so you move faster than you would have if you were heading just one of those single directions. Also, I can mash with my blaster here just about as much as I can with the snow speeder. It doesn't change the amount of damage you do on easy, but on higher difficulties, you'd want to not mash because the percentage of the blaster that you have left in like reserve actually adds to the damage. Also, you'll see that uh, silver Rebel Alliance token you just picked up. That's the uh, challenge points you collected when you're playing on the ground like this. And it should be mentioned that collecting all the challenge points isn't really like an, an essential thing for There's the a game. Checkpoint right here. It, uh, when you collect them all, you get a bunch of bonus lives at the end. And when you oh wow, wow, missed a jump. That's all right. It's okay. Ice is slippery, dude. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get this. Yeah. Don't worry. We got challenge points. We got bonus lives. Yeah, Just lie and tell like them 40. that it's a frame perfect trick. They'll believe it. <laughs> But anyways, uh, collecting challenge points will get you a bunch of extra lives. As you can see, Glaston clearly needs it. But um, <laughs> need a lot of help. Yeah. The uh, cool thing about 100% uh, is if you do collect all the challenge points at the end of the game, you get to unlock some sort of in-game secret depending on your difficulty, which when he does get that at the end of the game, hopefully we'll be able to show it off. Actually, since I already have uh, done, this, done that on this save file, um, I already have that unlocked, so could jump through the, the bars there, so it's nice. Grab that one, go back. Some of these challenge points are just kind of out of the way, but. It should also be noted that uh, platforming in this game can be a little bit finicky because the uh, movement in this game isn't exactly the smoothest you're gonna ever play in a uh, third person game, but uh, luckily when you've played it enough times, you can get a handle of uh, how movement and stuff works, but it's still pretty, uh, Iffy at times. Since it's a port of an N64 game, which was not an especially good port. Yeah, they might have spent at least 10 minutes playtesting it. <laughs> there we go. While he's collecting these other two uh, challenge points, do we want to mention the uh, donations we're going to be looking for? Oh, yes, yes. So coming up, there is a uh, rather lengthy uh, auto scroller level, which is, takes place on a train. So if you want to get in your donations that have your best train puns, we would be very appreciative. I'll Please see. do. You just saw him die there. He activated his elevator before getting those challenge points just so he could respawn in that room and then immediately take the elevator down. It's a, it's not necessarily a much faster strat, but it's a lot safer than trying to do a platforming back because if you screw that up, you'll lose a lot of time. You'll end up going to the same checkpoint anyway, so. Mm -hmm. And these walls are slowly pulling apart. There's a challenge point hidden behind the wall he's on right now, so we just have to wait for that. There's actually not any additional ice physics, um, so the not I'm not actually level. sliding out, sliding around. Oh yeah, that's right. There are ice physics on the desert planet. <laughs> yes. All right. So we're coming on the first boss, which is an ATST. And so one thing about the PC version is that because the frame rate is so much higher and it's kind of a, a, a kind of not a great port, uh, damage values are significantly higher because of the frame rate. And each boss also has kind of a weak spot. So as you can see, he just took out that ATST with absolutely no trouble whatsoever. But yeah, each boss has a kind of weak spot, and the ATST is uh, right around its mouth area and its neck area. We got Wampas in here. 
We'll see one on the way out. Hello. He's friendly. He just wants a hug. Mm -hmm. Right now, he's going to be escaping in his uh, ship known as the Outrider, also known as the Not Millennium Falcon. Because I'm not Han Solo. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so this next level is the uh, Asteroids. It's, there's really not a whole lot going on in this level. You have to destroy a set number of TIE Bombers and TIE Fighters. And the problem with this level is how many spawn at a time and where they spawn is random. So. The downside to this level in a speedrun setting is that you can arbitrarily just lose time or gain it based on what kind of spawns you get. He's also going to be getting challenge points, of course, for 100%, and uh, hopefully the first uh, one he can get it will be spawning soon. Mm -hmm. There are six in this level, so count along at home. We'll be collecting one shortly. There's there one. it is. The red asteroids, destroying them is what uh, gets you challenge points on this level. So that's one. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we got you back. Helps he needs help out. counting. Well, I'm trying to take two. Two. off uh, TIE Fighters as well, so counting is... Yeah, that kind of yeah. makes this a little extra work on 100%. Ah, right on the missiles. Also, the uh, hit detection with the blaster on your ship and the enemies is a little bit... Uh, dodgy, ah, so split apart. it's pretty hard to hit these things, which makes this level kind of a tedious. Three. Three. Oh, and on. so you'll be seeing him mostly use uh, his missiles to take out enemies, Four. which will occasionally ah. just sometimes not Got all of those. hit sometimes. And as you saw with that last group of uh, fighters, they like to go too high or too low so that you can't shoot them with your blasters, but Missiles can still get to him sometimes. Oh man, missed one. Yeah, and sometimes you will get a large number of ships with one missile, but other times you'll just randomly get one or two. Obviously, you want to go for three or four, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. Five. five. Thank you. Thank you. I lost count there. It's <laughs> all right, man. Wait, wait shoot. Wait. What comes after five? Uh, dude, I don't remember. Uh, seven? I'm pretty sure. Well, that means you'll have more than you need. No, we're still going to six. All right, six. All right. So that's uh, all the all of them, correct? Yep, that's yeah. all those. Yeah, now we just need to one worry fighter, about... One fighter. One fighter left. <laughs> now that's, that's, that's pretty bad luck. Bad spawn. Because <laughs> normally they'll spawn in about waves of three or four, and if certain uh, spawns happen, sometimes you'll just get the very last one in that set of enemies as one enemy, which is really unlucky. I want these bombers to come in threes because they're divisible by three left. Or twos. Of course, it's going to be a three, and then there's going to be one left <laughs> at the end. Yep. Get him missiles. <laughs> Get Yay. the uh, asteroid. That's great. <laughs> All right, so All right, that's that asteroids. Right. That level is unfortunately just not that exciting, but coming up on... Uh, the next level is a level probably a lot of people will remember playing. Yes. This is uh, Ord Mantell, and it's a gigantic train ride that takes place in a junkyard, which is appropriate because this level is straight garbage. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. This <laughs> level is very long on easy difficulty, unfortunately. The train riding section is about eight minutes long. So, while this is going on, I guess I'll explain some of the history of this game because... Believe it or not, there is a history of speedrunning for this game. Uh, <laughs> first off, big shout-outs to Alec Kermit because he came out with the original route for this game and did, I think, a segmented run for SDA around 2010. And things did, nobody did really, like, single-segment runs for a while until about 2012, 2013. Uh, and I jumped in and started playing it, and Alec Kermit came up. <laughs> wow. Why would you do that? <laughs> so this is the one way you lose time in uh, this level is dying. It's really inconvenient. I thought I had to jump there. You, you want some more train puns, don't you? Yes, I want more train puns. <laughs> yeah. Continue with the history. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> uh, minor boo-boos aside. So, yeah, I did some runs, and then Alec Kermit and I came up with some more strats and brought down the time for the game a little bit and started routing 100% on the N64, which is what we all originally used to run it on because... 
fun fact with the PC version is uh, most people couldn't really run it on modern computers because the original game ran on a 16-bit installer, which obviously is going to give you issues on modern uh, PCs, which are usually 64-bit. But uh, we did that for a while, and then it kind of just died down a little bit. Then out of nowhere, I think around 2014, a uh, bunch of new people came into the game and brought the time down even further. So I want to shout them out for uh, a little bit. First off, shout-outs to Alaris Villain. He did a lot of... Uh, runs for this game on N64 and uh, Ever Alert. Uh, both of them helped come up with some cool stuff. And then also huge shout outs to a guy named Flickerform. He uh, has a lot of the records for N64 uh, IELs and the any percent world record for N64, which is actually a ridiculously good run given the fact that it's on the N64. And uh, the one thing with the N64 is that the game itself is pretty similar. It's a lot slower, though, because it doesn't run at a stable frame rate. And there is some cool speed tech to it. Like, if you reset the neutral position of the analog stick for the N64, it makes dash move a lot faster. But that makes controlling dash a lot weirder, because turning this is a little bit more uh, janky than it already is. <laughs> but uh, that was how it was for a while. And the game kind of just, again, died down a bit. And then. On a very special day, I believe it was May the 4th, 2016, GOG finally re-released the PC version. And so everyone started playing it. And we were skeptical about it at first because certain glitches that worked on the N64 didn't work here. However, I did a few runs and managed to, even with just really basic strats, get the time lower than the N64 time. And then more people got interested in it and helped find more strats for it. So shout-outs to people like uh, Lifelike, who helped bring this time down, Allnack, who also currently runs the game, and big shout-outs to Glassnock, who found a lot of uh, really, really technical details with uh, time saves, with uh, movement and stuff. And uh, yeah, is there anyone else I haven't mentioned? BMAC Attack oh, Yeah, BMAC Attack, really good runner, who also put, has some really good times on PC and in 64. Yeah, and you did PC runs too. Yeah. I don't think I can go back to N64 anymore. <laughs> also, one beautiful uh, thing about this port is that it is clearly a port of the N64. And we've turned off fog just to show you how incredibly powerful the draw distance on this game is. You'll see uh, things just pop in. And it's like the one thing they couldn't change on the PC version. But yeah, so this level is, as I mentioned, very long. But on the N64, this train ride takes about 10 minutes. <laughs> Which is just really awful. On PC, it only takes eight. Yeah. So that, that eight. should be a clear indicator only. of how much the frame rate and uh, performance improve the game a little bit. Dash has auto-aim, but he likes to miss a lot. Yeah, uh, that's one thing we forgot to mention. If you haven't played this game before, you may not know how the aiming works. Essentially, you just turn Dash's body toward where there are enemies, and he will just slightly list toward aiming at the enemies slowly. You'll see that uh, coming up really, uh, really obviously. And a minor little detail about that is on easy difficulty, Dash's blaster is incredibly accurate. On harder difficulties, the blasts will start being a little more sporadic and uh, random with where they go. So you can't just like shoot everything from far away. OK. We're about at the halfway point, so great point for donations. Absolutely. Well, I hope you gentlemen are ready for them. Oh, oh I am ready. Oh, Please right. lay it on me. Let's see how we do. We got a $10 donation from Heku2 who says, train puns. I've been training my whole life for this. We expected and that one. That one's too easy. Come okay. on, guys. All right, let's see. Okay. Bass Guitar Bill donates $10 and says, speed running this game must take a lot of locomotivation. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, that one's great. clever. Okay. That's good. Celius donates $10 and says, Best train puns. I better get this one on the rails then. I need to go full steam ahead. Everybody should get all on board. I hope you don't mind the groaning as I lay the track work. I hope <laughs> I don't stop us at an intersection by making so many of these. Mm, that was delicious. <laughs> Can you even like do anything after that? Bring them on. <laughs> all right. I, I, here's, here's one more for you by Mr. Zimbu. $15 and says, did you hear the engineer of the train is a Wookiee? His name is... Chew chewy. <laughs> that's just that's just the right amount. Mm. All right, so this challenge points really. Uh, that one's kind of tricky. It's probably the only like tricky thing on this level, to be honest. Yeah, you can fall between the track or between the cars there. Yeah, so, so. he's got to be very particular about the movement. And one other thing I forgot to mention about this level is 
when you're taking turns like that and you hear that noise, uh, it means that you're taking a sharp turn I'll show you. on the N64. I'm not going to move. I jump. I, lean, I go that way because the train's moving this way. Yeah. And on the N64 version, you actually get a text warning that says sharp turn, but you don't get that here for whatever reason. I missed it. More train puns, please. <laughs> Bass Guitar Bill is back with another $10 donation and says, you died on the auto-scroller? You're totally off track. You've gone <laughs> off the rails. There you go. That jump can eat, be eaten by the train sometimes. I'm glad it didn't happen now. I've already died once. I love that death scream that that enemy makes. <laughs> We have an anonymous $16.88 donation. It says, Glassnonk, at your request, I choo choose to donate during the train level. I hope all the puns won't derail your run. Maybe instead we caboose your performance? Aha. Uh -huh. Good luck. I was wondering how somebody was going to use caboose. That's a good use yeah, of clever it. Clever use. I, I have proof. Mkid Trigun with $5 says, Why is the Empire after Dash our protagonist? They must have a locomotive. If only this train were a monorail, then we'd have a bunch of one-liners. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Wow. That's a good one. Yeah, I'm glad these puns are here, because this level's honestly, this is one of the worst parts about grinding runs for this game. Well, after a good Asteroids, then you have to do this level? Like, yeah. Uh, something messes up in the rest of the run, which is, this is only halfway through the run. We always <laughs> you have like to go back through the RNG of asteroids and hoth grinding. It's just no fun. Yeah, we like to joke around and call this level the hype train because it's just eight minutes of doing absolutely nothing. And people tend to show up to Yeah, this is like literally any time somebody goes in, they're like, oh, this is my first time watching a Shadows of the Empire speedrun. I can't wait. Great. And then they see eight minutes of this. And they leave. For the next time I drive. We have time for maybe one or two more. Probably one. Nanner put in 85, donates $100, and says, first time donating at AGDQ. Here's to a good asteroid field, which it was. In loving memory of our favorite princess and general, thanks to everyone for making this special event happen every year. My three-year-old daughter would be appalled if I didn't try to save the animals, so save the animals. All right, so now this is the boss of this level, IG-88. He's a... Kind of random in a way, but there's a somewhat consistent way of uh, killing him quickly. We don't want to completely kill him, though, because we do have to get the uh, other challenge points on this level. There's Otherwise, we have to do it again. Yeah. And I know as badly as everyone wants to see this level again. We could do more with more train puns, I guess. <laughs> Oops. That's all right. Uh, yeah, this... Like I said, frame rate can make damage values really high, and for IG-88, he's like just a constant... Uh, attack box when he's walking, which is kind of interesting. One more to get. Yeah, and if everything goes right, you should get this challenge point. IG88 should be right there. Mm -hmm. Hello. That went pretty well. <laughs> All right, so that level is long for just being an auto scroller. This level is long just because this, this level is massive. This, this is, is actually longer than the auto scroller. Yeah. But we're actually doing stuff, so. It's still a pretty cool level, though. Well, it's cool except for one thing that can sometimes happen. But hopefully that doesn't happen. <laughs> actually, low key, I kind of hope it does. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was kind of funny when it happened in practice. Yeah. Yeah, this level is just a lot of moving around for the most part. You'll notice the listing of his blaster shots. Uh, that's the aiming. Oh, man. So this is a great example of why dying in certain places can be really inconvenient, because he's going to be respawning all the way back there, because this game runs on a uh, checkpoint system. And sometimes it can be good, and other times it can just do this to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're kind of close to a checkpoint, so. Yeah. Just trying to shave off as much time as possible. In, in the meantime, enjoy the sweet Star Wars soundtrack. I think it's safe this time. 
One last train punt coming at you from Pont Jacko. $10 donation says a railroad engineer must be sure not to lose his train of thought or he might go down the wrong track. A train punt and philosophy, I like it. I like, yeah. Food for thought. All right, so yeah, he's got to be very careful on uh, okay. these uh, parts of the cliffs here because for whatever reason, sometimes you can just start sliding in one direction and once that happens you can't change your course of direction at all so oftentimes you'll just slide off into the uh the void at the bottom sand wampa sand wampa i didn't jump <laughs> hey we get to see him again <laughs> we get to see the sand wampa again he might come out to meet us this time oh that's true i hope so he's a really cool guy nah he's he's hiding again Hi, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, he's jumping to this little platform here because it's a little bit faster to get there that way. Because he doesn't need to get this challenge point over here. See, now I take back what I said earlier. I really hope this slope, uh, sliding thing doesn't happen to you. <laughs> the scary one. Yeah, this one's where things can just get a little nutty. Well, that one right there is not as bad as previous corners because there's a checkpoint that you can hit on your way down. Yeah. Alright. 59 health is alright. Yeah, like he's going to want to take some damage and have low health because he's actually going to uh, want to do a death warp coming up here soon. Gotta wait. The problem with this strat on uh, using death warp and damage is that damage eyes can be a bit random at times, oh, like, mm. and so can enemy behavior. <laughs> Just stand there staring at you as you come forward, man. <laughs> yeah, so dying here is actually faster, no matter how you do it, than <laughs> going to the other side. With the uh, platform. I like the taunt after you're already dead. Continue shooting. Yeah. If you stand right next to the stormtroopers, they'll just always shoot, other, other than besides taking a couple shots and then. I just love the animation of them aiming. It looks, it looks so bad. Tells you why they can't aim pretty well. What are you missing. talking about, man? Those blast marks too accurate for stormtroopers. It's obviously stormtroopers. Sand people. Sorry, well, I just can't Sand the troopers. Two of them. What? It's all right, buddy. Yeah, I've never it's seen early. Star Wars, okay, so. <laughs> I actually came on this couch because I thought that was Star Trek, and I'm a really huge fan of it. <laughs> Active. All right, so now we're getting yeah. a pretty cool item here coming up. Jetpack. Jetpack has an interesting little glitch right there. Apparently called the dead fish. Yeah, dead fish. I learned this yesterday after being, you know, part of this game for since 2013. I just learned that somebody came up with a name for it. Thanks to good old Zosti. <laughs> yeah, so the jetpack uh, has a really interesting uh, thing where you can, if you're swinging back and forth, you can Where'd it go? Uh, turn off your jetpack and it'll basically zip you to the side and launch you upward. And uh, Glass, you've got... Uh, have an explanation as to why that works? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I gotta get there first. Are you gonna make this? Yeah. I can do a dead fish. Oh, yeah, that's right. Backup strats. Backup strats. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, gotta oh. do it again. Not high enough. Perfect. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what I think is happening is Dash's strafing is attached to how his character model is angled. So if you angle a, his character model and turn off his jetpack, you don't reset to a neutral angle. So your strafe will send you slightly upwards or down. And if you're against a wall, you'll just slide up that wall, like so. Or if you want to go down, you can just do this. You do have to be careful if you're going down with that, though, because if there's like a floor below you, you can uh, 
actually do damage to yourself. The game will actually treat it like you're falling from a certain height to get uh, enough damage to do fall damage. Also, we've been seeing him pick up some uh, different weapons along the way. Uh, the most useful one that he's picking up is a weapon called the Pulse Cannon. Mm -hmm. And it's already pretty powerful, but on the PC version, as I mentioned, the frame rate makes damage values a lot higher, so the Pulse Cannon basically becomes broken. <laughs> and you do a ton of damage per second. It's insane. So I grabbed a checkpoint there inside the hangar so I can uh, just take a small detour for this challenge point. Oops. He's going to do an interesting strat here. One that I just discovered existed yesterday. <laughs> Shoutouts to Glassnock for finding that. <laughs> Shoutouts to me. Thought of it yesterday. That was an experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There were some choice words said about it that are not stream safe. So the big difference between 100% and 80% at this point is normally there's a way you can actually skip straight to the Boba spit fight, which is at the end of the level. But we have to go through the level to get some uh, challenge points. So it's uh, obviously we can't quite skip to Boba Fett right now, or in this category for that matter. That was a good quick pick up at that challenge point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he moved his gun like he fired it, but he didn't. That no. sometimes can just happen. Misfire. The guns aren't as good as mine. Well, he's not dead. <laughs> Got a long ride, so I'll show off the um, other view that you get for getting all the challenge points in this mode, or on easy not useful in any way. It's really not useful because I can't move using the keyboard. I can strafe using the keyboard, but I can't move forward or backwards. I can still move forward or backwards using the mouse, though, which is not what I want to do. Like we said before, really good port of the game. You can't turn that off either. Yeah, the downside of like the actual secrets you unlock for completing the game 100% on each difficulty is that none of them are particularly useful or interesting. <laughs> there are two more challenge points after this one that I'll pick up during the uh, boss fight. One of the nice things about 100% is that you pick up a lot more ammo to use, so... You're allowed, you're allowed to use it a lot. <laughs> There's the boss arena down there. It's way down there. It's fine. Right, and so that's a character you might be familiar with if you've uh, seen anything related to Star Wars. All right, I might get flung to the left or forward to the right here. Okay, good. Oh, he flew away. Great. So the pro the downside with this boss fight is. Uh, if you're lucky, uh, Boba Fett will just stand still and take a bunch of damage and then just die instantly. But sometimes he can start moving and Did I clip through that platform? Yes, you did. Yeah, you did? You clipped through what? Uh... <laughs> okay, so there this has no actually happened to me once before on N64. <laughs> All right, let's see. How can I kill him? Seeker, go. <laughs> uh, where am I? He was there, but then he... Okay, All right, it's platform's back. back. Okay. That was interesting. I could go get those challenge points now. Nah. Eh, oh, there it is. was Boba. There we go. So yeah, that boss fight okay. was a thing. <laughs> Even Dash looks confused. He's just laughing. Very confused. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the challenge point down here. I don't want you seeker for this, for finding this label, and I want to use pulse. But I'm very low on pulse because <laughs> of that trouble with the, with uh, Boba Fett. But not enough. Not enough. Third time's a charm? There we go. Well, yeah. I could have just jumped off by then. 
if I'm inside the body of the slave one, it doesn't show the cutscene where it uh, is destroyed and falls down into the uh, hangar. My favorite level. Yeah, this is uh, Moss Eisley and Beggar's Canyon, and it is a really cool idea of a level that's thrown in probably the worst setting possible. You are going incredibly fast and navigating through incredibly tight corridors, and it's kind of annoying. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> Much better in practice. Yeah, there's a, of course, uh, we have to collect challenge points, which are just tokens scattered throughout uh, the level. Randomly, as if they didn't really in think about where Yeah, they are kind spot. of just hastily thrown in there. They're out of the way, too. It's weird. Yeah. Come on. All right. Yeah, and controlling this thing in the air to grab them is actually, it's a task in itself. So it's very easy to just miss stuff like that. Dash's bike is built for speed, not for control. But the imp it, sorry. Yeah, if, if this was on... Um, any difficulty other than easy, any time I run into the wall, I would explode. Come on. The there important thing about this level, though, that he did is, you may have noticed he killed the very first enemy, and he's not going to kill any others in the level. For whatever reason, there is a glitch on the easy difficulty where if you kill that first enemy and then just ignore everyone else and get to a certain point, all the other enemies will just kind of freeze in place, which we will hopefully see here shortly. Yeah, we'll see on easy, they kind of wait for you a good bit so you can get in front of them. The main thing is that you just have to be in front of the guy and take a left here, and everyone stops. Yeah. They slowly s creep along, so if you just don't do anything else, they'll eventually get out of it. Oh, but so that was a cool challenge point token? Yeah, that was a Sam and Max reference challenge point. If you've played any Star Wars game on the PC in the uh, 90s, you've probably seen that uh, somewhere. Nice. Those are deceptively difficult to get. Yeah. So this is the Beggar's Canyon section. This is just a mess of tight corridors. And the plus side is, well, like, as long as you're turning, like a certain way against the wall, you won't ever like crash and uh, slow yourself down. But even then, the geometry can be a little bit finicky. Mm -hmm. You can misjudge a turn. Mm -hmm. So it really just comes down to a lot of muscle memory. And one more challenge point to get to. That works. Oh, we'll, we'll take the we'll take the back way up. There we go. You can grab that one fast if you just kind of jump the gap a little bit. And All right, you got the jump. Nice. That one is really scary because just sometimes you'll just get pulled into that. Uh, hole below and just die. Collision geometry is not always great. And now we're going on to Imperial Freighter Supro. So this is honestly one of my favorite Thank levels you. on the 100% category. There's some really cool strats. <laughs> Gotta love the sound this flamethrower makes <laughs> when it hits enemies. Quickly get up here. Hit the button to start the cycle. This was a pretty average door cycle. Yeah. Sometimes you can get get it to where you just walk straight through. Not that time though. Sometimes you can also get doors where you just have to wait on every single one of them. Yeah, there's a single door. All right, there. There's one challenge point behind this. Oh, good. Didn't take too much damage. One up here. The platforming in this section can be a, can be an experience sometimes. This is a kind of a cool strat that you just jump on the slope of uh, that other platform to get on there. Normally you would just have to take the conveyor belts and get to the other one like that. Very low on pulse. I think I'll have to use a disruptor on the um, boss. 
I'll have an extra anyway. I like the disruptor strat anyways. <laughs> so this is the uh, last major part of this stage. It's uh, pretty cool because each of these switches will uh, uh, open a certain door along these uh, three different floors. So we have to open up two specific ones first in order to get disruptors, which is another weapon you'll be seeing shortly, and two more challenge points. So he's just going to open this one so he can get to the uh, third floor, which is where the boss area is going to be. All right. Low on health. Health there, health there. All right. Here comes a cool strat right here. That's the disruptor. Kind of just destroys everything in the way. And the way place he shoots it uh, not only destroys the box that has the challenge point, but it also clears out those boxes from uh, Excuse me. blocking this area. <laughs> And this is a pretty interesting boss right here. This is a uh, cargo loader droid. I don't know why they decided to make this a boss in the game. But he did. There he is. Yeah, there's a few faults with his design, so he kind of just blows up really quickly. You now. Oh yeah, we're looking for this supercomputer. It has plans. Death Star plans, I think. You'll notice the guys up in the control tower just died. They do that when the loader droid dies. Don't know why. On very rare occasions, you can actually hear their death cry when it happens. <laughs> nice. All right, so this is the sewer level. <laughs> <laughs> if you were a child, you probably played this level and were a little bit scared of it. Striker loves this level. <laughs> Nightmares, dude. That was a really good fall. Nice. nice. I had to line it up, though. But yeah, this level, uh, one thing we didn't really talk about is the enemies in this game, uh, the mostly the uh, stormtroopers. Uh, these red ones are slightly more powerful versions of them. They do more damage and take more damage. And you'll be seeing them a lot from uh, this point on. They'll basically be replacing the uh, reg most of the regular stormtroopers. Oh. It's going for a quick fall between these two final um, chambers. Didn't get it. So I love this challenge point right here because it's just a wall with this guy hidden behind it. <laughs> He's pretending, of course. Oh, there they are, dude. And here's the Dianoga. Nightmare fuel. They are, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're nightmare fuel. They have this wonderful sound coming out of them. And I think my favorite thing about Dianogas in Star Wars games is every game seems to have this interesting interpretation of what a Dianoga actually is. If you don't know what a Dianoga is, it's the, it's the trash compactor monster from A New Hope. So... It's one challenge point that's all the way out of the way. Yeah, it's just an obnoxiously long hallway. <laughs> you can still hear them. Still roaring. Yeah. They still know you're here. <laughs> A five dollar donation from Ugg Rochester it says his name is Dash because taking the train was slow, so he walks fast. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, that was a combo with just a Star Wars pun. I like it. That's good. So, yeah, he had to go get this, uh, that key to open up this doorway. There's actually like a way to skip doing that, but it is really not good to do that because the textures on the other side won't load unless you have the key and activate that switch. Mm -hmm. So it is possible to get there, but it's definitely not worth it. It's also not useful in 100%. Yeah. Ah, uh, that churner's in a bad spot. More disruptors, those are going to be pretty useful. You found the boost of the activator. Okay, you're just in time. Otherwise, I have to wait for that cycle. It's kind of long and boring. Those guys really like to kill runs several times. 
Yeah, their placement when they start attacking you can be a little bit uh, random. So if you're already at about bad health for whatever reason and they start shooting at you in a really bad spot, you can often die just because of that. And there's not much you can really do about it. Take that slow. You can get clipped into any of those side walls by the, the gears that are turning. All right, so this is a boss area. Fun Remember fact, I show it. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> if you weren't scared of Dianogas, this is definitely going to do the job. But uh, scarier with the fog. Yeah. <laughs> Pay very close attention. You're going to hear an audio cue for something. And it's dead. One shot. So one thing I also didn't mention is on the N64 version, you can actually skip this boss by clipping through the ceiling, but it's not <laughs> possible to do on PC. He's showing you your friend, Striker. It's the Sarlacc. Yeah, just just the Sarlacc. The reason he's kind of piddling around is because he has to wait for the ceiling to go away so he can move on. There's really nothing else to do until you wait for the water to drain. Mm. All right. This is the last level we're going to be playing on the ground. This is Shizor's Palace. It's this also is just the last the level with um, challenge points. Yeah. And uh, it's not really been mentioned, but the main villain of this game is actually a guy named Shizor. You're never actually going to see him in the game. There are cutscenes with him, but yeah, don't actually get to see him. On the PC version, you don't really want to see them, to be <laughs> honest. Oh, we'll see one at least. Yeah, this level's pretty interesting and is probably the best music in the entire game, in my opinion. Um, Ooh, that was bad. You went for a very difficult strat there. You have to move very quickly to make that uh, door. Now I'm very low on health, so. Just use some Seekers to clear out the way. Sometimes Seekers just don't want to hit things, That's especially bad. small things. Jukes. I forgot where the checkpoint was for that one. That's not too bad. Nope. Oh, yeah. There's a golden droid over there. Got him. Seekers are sometimes useful. <laughs> sometimes. But sometimes they actually don't seek at all. There's actually a f uh, little function you can do in the game that's called a seeker cam, and it basically, while you're firing your seeker, it just has the camera in the uh, trajectory that the seeker takes, and you will never see us use it ever because it's not particularly good. Well, you, you stand still while, yeah. while you do that, so there's no need. There's one more challenge point over here. Picked up the um, stunner. We'll be using that shortly. This is the only level that has the stunner, so it's kind of weird that it's only in this level. Yeah. Especially with the sheer number of like droid enemies that are in this level. <laughs> stunner doesn't work against droids. Only uh, humanoids. Actually, all we know of are these um, red dudes, so don't even know if they work on other humans. <laughs> Gotta wait. Yeah, this secret right here is a little bit obnoxious because it's very well hidden, to say. Yeah, that secret kindly. wall. That secret wall doesn't really have any indication that you can activate it, does it? No. <laughs> I mean, there's kind of like a somewhat co neat clue with the, that one gear turning slowly, like, oh, maybe I should go down here. Mm. Yeah. But it's kind of obnoxious. I'm out of pulse, so I gotta use the flamethrower. Oh, I did pick up some pulse. Sweet. So this next room's interesting. He has to put down three pulse bombs on uh, three different lo uh, levels of this area. So he's just gonna kind of be doing them in a way that allows him to uh, do it fast and get the challenge points in an efficient manner, too. He's also gonna be using the stunner in order to prevent those red enemies from shooting him. Just makes dealing with that room a lot easier. 
And that's the last cha challenge point. Yes. So um, there's something wrong with this uh, scene. I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that pillar in the middle is not supposed to be there. Clearly. Well, maybe Ooh. not clearly. Music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is the gladiator droid. Disruptors just basically destroy this boss like it's absolutely nothing. <laughs> but he's just he gives he fights to the very end even when he's just got his head left. Alrighty, and that was Shizor's Palace. That was the last level as he mentioned with challenge points, and now we're going on to uh, this thing. So Dash is uh, going to go to the sky hook, but he needs to be very sneaky so that nobody detects him. So we're just going to kind of stand here for a minute, and hope that they don't pick us up. Uh, they oh, found wow, us. we screwed up. Wow. Found us already. Hmm. What should we do? I don't know. Uh, Try to hail them. Try giving them the uh, Imperial uh, security codes. Hailing frequencies open. Don't think it's working. Hey, I don't oh, think it's working. All right, hold on. You look like you use use some help. Let's make this a co-op run real quick, okay? Okay, yeah. All right, so sorry, GDQ staff. Uh, this is now a co-op run? Yep, now co-op. All Go right, let's it. try and shoot this. So, uh, you seem to be having some trouble here. Yeah, yeah just a bit. Wow, your hand is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you just we died. died. Come on, you just got to use the force. Oh. That's not how the force works. <laughs> I think we should use the targeting computer. <laughs> That's the opposite of the force. <laughs> All right. So in case you couldn't figure it out, this is actually just an auto-scroller, essentially. Okay. It takes, what, four? Four minutes. Four, four minutes, minutes yeah. and it doesn't matter if you die or not. Because I have 21 lives right He's now. He's got 21 so. lives. It doesn't matter. He could literally just sit here for the entire level, and he'd still make it. Yeah, if you want, uh, if you want to, you know, pass the time on this level, you can try and kill as many of these as you want. And uh, each, fi I think it's 15, right? Each 15. 15. Yeah, each 15 gives you an extra life. So if something does go really bad on the very last part of this level for whatever reason, we will have more than enough lives to deal with it. I should also mention that this level is actually broken on Jedi difficulty on the PC. <laughs> like, awful. you will instantly go into the level, there will be about 10 Star Vipers, and they will just destroy you instantly. They kill you in about five shots yeah. of the lasers, and they're very accurate. This is really starting to hurt my hand. Oh, okay. I think I got All right, it. yeah, you can have to take it from here, buddy. Nice co-op run, guys. Yeah. Good job. So we probably still have about two or so minutes left in this, so if we can get some donations, that fill the time quite nicely. Perfect. We have an anonymous $5 donation that says full steam ahead for this speed run. <laughs> All the practice has culminated into this moment. Oh my god. This fun train is electric. Yes. You're using coal. Culminated. We have a $5 donation from Muvono. It says super excited for the Star Wars games right now. Shout out to Jordan on the couch for getting me into speed running and good luck on the runs today. Thank you. A $50 donation from Mama T. Great run. Here's my pun. Those who steal trains must have a loco motive. <laughs> Don't lose your train of thought during this run. Shout out to my son's glass nonk and master squirrel. Let's run cancer off the rails. Hey, Mom. Aw. <laughs> Thanks for the donation. And the pun. Yeah. $10 donation from Anonymous. It says, go, go, Shadows of the Empire. IG-88 used to scare me too much to play after the train ride. Thanks for <laughs> running this amazing game. It's okay, IG-88 uh, scares me occasionally, too. <laughs> Pocket Evil with the $10 donation says, Woke up early on my day off to see the Shadows of the Empire run. Absolutely loved this game growing up and had some of the best cheat codes to play around with. Watching this get demolished even without them is quite the treat. Donation towards Contra 3 because I don't want AGDQ to end. <laughs> Shoutouts to Wampa Stompa. Wampa Stompa, Wampa Stompa yeah. yeah. A $5.01 donation from Max A66. It says, Shadows of the Empire is one of my favorite Star Wars games. Good luck, and shoot cancer with your blaster for me. Oh, and save the animals. This is a rebellion, right? Last night, did you just try to shoot the Star Destroyer? Well, it did just say shoot cancer, so. <laughs> well, it's trying. <laughs> is it working yet? No, it's a bit far away. Oh, okay. 
So believe it or not, that Star Destroyer actually isn't our main target for the last level. It's that thing right there, the Skyhook. The not Death Star. Yeah, the not Death Star. We will go down a not trench run later on. All right, so the thing with this part of the level is uh, you have to take out these turrets first before you can go into the center for whatever reason. And these turrets are an interesting enemy because they actually have uh, regenerating health, which is a really strange place to implement that, in my opinion, but I didn't design the game, so. So he's basically just going to be trying to take these out as quickly as possible. I'm missing. No? No, no, you got it. This is also the only level that you can't uninvert the controls. That does it for the turret. Now fly inside and destroy oh. the reactor uh. core. Oh my god. I'm alive. Here's your okay. <sighs> okay, not trench run. Trench run is a lot more harder than I thought it was. Alright, we can get a double hit on this core here. Got it. Nice. Right. We can go for another one since we got the first one. We have five missiles in total, so. Let's get out Sweet, here. that's it. Time. What was the time again? 52.05. Okay. Here's the uh, best cutscene in the game. I can't believe you. Oh, God. <laughs> he looks so lifelike. I know, Luke, but he didn't die in vain. Thanks to him, the Alliance no longer has anything to fear from Black Sun. And the Imperial computer he captured is being destroyed <laughs> right now. It may well contain information worth the price he paid with his life. Yeah, that's kind of an indicator of what the rest of the cutscenes in this game are like. There are quite a few. So <laughs> that is Shadows of the Empire. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for that great run, Glassnog. And thank you all for watching Awesome Games Done Quick 2017, benefiting the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Snowney donates $75 and states, I've been watching AGDQ for two years now. Every year I'm blown away at the dedication and passion shown by everyone involved. Amazing cause, amazing event. Way to show the world just what can be done when you find a cause you believe in and decide to do something about it. Keep up the great work and good luck to all the runners to come. Let's see some more world records. Hi. Coming up next, we have the Super Star Wars Return of the Jedi run by Stryker. Difficulty, Jedi mode. Please stick around for that. It'll be another great Star Wars run. Jack L. donates $25 and says, after seeing my first GDQ a few years ago, I was I am always excited to catch it, just as I finish catching up on the runs I missed. A great job by both the staff and runners who make this event possible. Props to the people involved in the new stream graphics. Well, thank you very much. Ian Stufford donates $40 and says, in loving memory of our dear friend, Dr. Sumay Jain of UPMC. We're donating now because he was a huge Star Wars fan he passed away from cancer in 2016. Our hearts and memories go out to him and his family. $10 from Pyrocider. It says, love the work you guys are doing, and I've been watching all week. Here's to someday reading about cancer in history books, not the news. Also, save the animals.
Thank you so much for watching today. Coming up after Return of the Jedi, we have a number of Contra games that are going on. And as I've noted before, we are still looking to fulfill our, uh, our bid for Contra 3 The Alien Wars, an 80% Death Warps run by Mr. K. As it currently stands, we still have just about $13,000 to go with the Contra block quickly approaching. So please, if you'd love to see that, and I know you do, then please go ahead and donate for that. And thank you so much. One of our final train puns from before, Alex Deerkop has donated $25 and says, Oh man, Shadows, one of my most played N64 games. One of my favorite levels are coming up, and on harder difficulties, I had to train hard to succeed. I know the runner will stay on track, and will continue to choo-choo through all of the challenge points. Very nice. And thank you all so much for your puns. We appreciate them. We have a $75 donation from Anonymous. It states, my cousin is fighting cancer right now. Feels good to donate for a great cause. Keep up the good work, guys. A $100 donation from Hacksmaster. It says, hi, HDQ. Been watching since 2013 when I first discovered the speedrunning communities. Thanks for the years of entertainment you've provided me. I have a $10 anonymous donation. It says, I've watched for the past few years and am finally able to donate. Thank you to everyone involved. You're all the best. Thank you so much. Merrick donates $5 and says, where do you guys get the music for in between games? I'm loving the classic soundtracks between the amazing runs. Keep it up. Ben Shosly donates $20 and says, I learned yesterday that someone that was there for me a lot when I was a kid died of cancer when he succeeded to fight, it, fight against it years ago. It's not much, but I hope it'll help to win the fight.